fake, they have the fake limousine to drive the 50 miles. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan, accompanied by Rear Admiral Charles Three things I would offer. 
Number one, you're well prepared. You're ready for what's ahead of you out there, and don't rest on your laurels. Because if they hit the ground running, you get out there and stay ahead. Use that preparation. <laughs> Second, members of society. And finally, if you forget everything else they ever said to you here, always do what is right. Be men and women of integrity. Always do what is right. Be honest, be ethical. <laughs> My final wish for you. We'll miss you here. You're ready to go. You're ready to move on to bigger and better things. And that final wish is that may you find success, satisfaction, and soul. Years ago, <laughs> the chief of naval operations rather shocked the American people with testimony saying for the first time in this century that the Navy had been weakened to the point where it could no longer do its job. And a month after that, in an historic speech in Chicago on March 17th, Ronald Reagan pledged to the American people that enough was enough and that the time had come to reverse that course and to reestablish a Navy and Marine Corps worthy of our great history, worthy of our great traditions and the security of our country. Many good men gave... It's the end of the Second World War. Gave individuals throughout our history who have fought and died to keep this country free. The United States is a democratic nation of free people. We are a far more moral and decent land than any totalitarian state, and we should be proud of it. During the last decade, <laughs> 30 submarines. There had been theories that Soviet belligerents would wane as their relative strength to the United States increased. Those theories went by the wayside in the late 1970s.
We've moved forward to ferret out waste and inefficiency. And by the way, that's why you hear those stories about outrageously expensive hammers or bolts for efforts to make the best use of our defense dollar. To make sure our military is ready, we've purchased spare parts, ammunition. <laughs> At the end of the 1970s, we had ships that couldn't leave port for lack of a full crew. Today, that situation has been dramatically reversed. We've not only been meeting our recruitment goals, but we're... Every even many of our own resources, the oil in Alaska, for example, are transported by sea. And the great democratic nations of the world are tied by shared values and a reliance on the sea lanes. Our treaty commitments mean little without access to the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, the Indian Ocean, the Persian Gulf, all the great bodies of water. The challenge is great. Our Navy is meeting a heavy resistance and I wish you fair winds and following seas. What? 
Vincent C. Bowers. Brett W. Wiseman. William A. Richard J. Coombs. Scott F. Harrison. Laura A. Dunbar. Edward L. Janikin. Paul W. Lurkey. Stephen T. Nauer. Richard G. Palladino. Curtis S. James P. Winkler. Michael J. Sador. Chong M. Yi. Timothy H. Tees. From the 11th Company, Kevin J. Best. Mario G. Trujillo. Robert M. Byron. Jonathan M. Ewell. Scott F. Kramer. James M. Ray. Evan G. Evans Jr. Oh, 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 oh. I got it all. Oh, Fidel. Okay, right. no, we've already done the Yeah, that's, that's an old. George J. Foresca Jr. Madeline M. Cassidy. L. Packer. Martin S. Medley. Thomas C. Nicholson. Charlotte D. Monk. States Marine Corps to rank from 22 May 1985, do you hereby accept such appointment and do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. Congratulations, Marines, and welcome to the Corps. Chief of Naval Operations.
Operations, Admiral James E. Navy. All midshipmen entering the United States Navy, raise your right hand. Having been appointed an ensign in the United States Navy to rank from 22 May 1985, do you hereby accept such appointment and do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which you are about to enter, so help you God. I do. Congratulations and welcome to the greatest nation.